So in this video, I wanted to look at how we can coherently build children as problem solvers. In this context, it's a year two class, and we're going to look at the work from a child who, who I'll name Lily um, and see her journey throughout the lesson. Um, and the resources from IC Problem Solving Year 2. The pedagogy is around building, having related challenges that, that build in complexity and where we focus children's thinking on specific aspects that build up to some of the later challenges. Um, the worked example starts off with, with this one here. So Tim has three t-shirts, Tim has three pairs of trousers. Initially, Lily thinks you can make three different outfits. And then when we start to show some of the, in fact, the first two uh, examples, she actually realizes, no, actually there's more and counts down and counts for each t-shirt and works out the number of outfits that actually there are nine outfits. And then we show the different images. Um, that leads into the first task um, where we're finding the different combinations of ice creams that can be made. And Lily asks the very natural question, um, can we have more than two flavours in the large ice cream cone? Um, but anyway, she actually starts by writing out the different combinations um, and having done that, draws the lines and having done that, then puts these boxes around the list that she created and sees it as for each ice cream flavour, there's two possible cones, so it's four times two, um, unprompted by me. That led into the work example, the second part, where we have a look at this. Beth is given five pounds a day for doing the gardening. She's just gardening for three days. And we, the children have to discern between, is this an additive structure or is it a multiplicative structure? And discern between the two pictures. And then other examples, including this combinations example, where the children are encouraged to see the picture on the left as representing a how many combinations um, and in this instance looking at how for example what the dots could represent um, then that leads in to this paired challenge where children have to match the pictures with the number sentences um, and, the, and the number stories um, and the, the, I guess the one that I would draw your attention to is the, the first two rows um, and this is where for, for Lily and, and, and her partner, they had more of the discussion around was interpreting between those two where we have four and three as, as part of both of, the, uh, as both of the worded questions and actually recognising four T-shirts. Those four dots could represent the T-shirts. Um, now that led in then to task C. Um, and in this instance, Lily starts off by drawing for Rob, the five jumpers, and then with the dark dots, the two trousers, and then counts from dot to dot to dot to dot and works out that that's 10. Again, using this initially in this counting strategy. And then it was quite hard to see from this picture, but she actually drew then a four and a three and did the same thing for Jack. Um, but then I had this fascinating explanation because writes the two different multiplication number sentences and then describes how, let me get this right, the right way around, that if you compare Jack and Rob, then actually they have the same number of pieces of clothing, because if we take that picture for Jack, if we move one up there, then that's what Rob has, five jumpers and two pairs of trousers, whereas Jack has these four jumpers and those three pairs of trousers, but that's actually more combinations. And this, this really abstract idea for, for her to explore. And um, then Lily actually managed to move on to, to this task um, going deeper still. So Zara has some hats, some jumpers and some trousers. Zara has more jumpers than hats. Zara can make 20 different outfits. How many hats, jumpers and trousers could Zara have? I'll not re re uh, relate the whole journey here. But in essence, we have the pictures of the hats, the trousers, the, the jumpers. She makes lots of different, um, she starts off with one hat and actually she kept one hat and then found different combinations. And then she started to connect this idea of the, the, the multiplication and actually if there's one hat, I need to find combinations to make 20. Got there in the end, represented by the picture. Uh, I love the journey. Um, but again, hopefully this is a template, having these related tasks together to get all children thinking about some of those key ideas build coherently towards these really rich problem-solving tasks.